Hi. Who are you? Liberty. Well, what are you doing up there? I slept here last night. Are you lost? No, I know where I am. You do, run away? From who? Liberty what? Just plain Liberty. Well, where do you live? I don't remember. Well, what do you mean you don't remember? I've got amnesia. What's the matter with your back? You want to know what's the matter with my back? It hurts because there's a bullet in it. That's why I live at the beach on a policeman's disability pension. And that's why I moonlight the rest of my income as a private detective. I have a boat. As soon as I get it put back together, I'm going out in the ocean when they don't have any telephones. Telephones bug me. A day's happened. The day I get up, my back hurts, I run my mile. I don't know anybody named Jennifer. I live in my world, Jennifer lives with her colonel. If you said Harry O to her, she'd say who? Listen, uh, Jennifer, do you want me to talk to Charlie for you? He wouldn't appreciate it, and I'd feel like a coward. What are you looking for? I'm looking for my whole life. That is what I'm looking for. Well, it's in there somewhere. <laughs> My lipstick is missing again. I am missing another earring. I lost my wristwatch the day before yesterday. I don't know what happened to my wedding ring, and now I can't find the keys. Which keys? My key ring. The key to my apartment, the key to this apartment, the key to my mailbox. I'm an incoherent and chaotic person.
You're still here. I'm waiting for you to come back. Hi. Who's that? That's Mildred. You making out with her? Go home. You never said what's the matter with your back. It's none of your business what's the matter with my back. How do you know she's not my wife? Hmm. She doesn't look like a wife to me. You gonna go home? Do I have to call the police and have them take you home? I'm not hurting anything. Okay. Okay, save the taxpayers' money. I'm going. You gonna be all right? How far do you live? Oh, uh, just down the beach. I'm ready. Uh, start without me. Missing person, Sergeant Merriman. Yeah, Dick, this is Harry Orwell. Harry, hiya. Anybody uh, lose a skinny little girl kid, uh, 12 years old, blonde hair, and freckles? Calls herself Liberty. Is that a name or a slogan? High drama. Nothing that fits on my list this morning. Just touching all the bases, thanks. Anytime. Afternoon. I'm sorry. I truly am. It's all right. 20 minutes. It's not bad for you. Uh, I'm sorry. It's not the way I was going to start. I know. You want to uh, go sit down someplace? Get some breakfast? Want to get some coffee? Want to come back to me? Oh, Charlie, I... I want you back. I want a divorce. Yeah, well, let's, uh, let's walk around, talk to each other about it. Start. I know all about you and the colonel. I never made a secret of it. I know you didn't. That's my point. Don't get defensive. Just let me try to communicate this. I don't, I'm not concerned with him. I really don't even care about him. And if you can make a choice to go to him and you can make a choice to come back to me, that's, that's fine. That's a commitment to me on your part. I'm satisfied with that. I can't make that commitment. I, I really want you back. No. You want me back, but you don't have the patience to live with me. Charlie, I didn't leave you for John. I left you because we couldn't live together and there was something missing in my life. I never even met John until after I left you. Uh, are you in love with him? That, that doesn't have anything to do with anything. You still love me? I will always love you. But the marriage is over. It's a finished marriage. Not my marriage, Jen. I'm still married. I don't belong to you, Charlie. I am not your property. I didn't come to you for permission. He's taking advantage I want to stop this of you. War. I don't want to talk about him with you. Why not? You talk about me with him, don't you? Charlie, please. Please. Just give me a divorce. No. Listen, there is no way. Yes, there is. I'll see you in hell first. I am in hell. You keep saying you love me, and that's your excuse for owning me. What you will let me have and what you won't let me have. What about what I want? What about what I need? I am in hell. Oh. Jenny, we need each other, that's all. 
No, Charlie. You may need me, but I don't need you. Responsibility, Roy. You have, don't you? A man like that is like an animal. He hurts her. He has to expect retribution. There is order in the universe. An eye for an eye. I agree. He has to be punished. Charlie English was killed and my telephone rang at the beach. You see what I mean about telephones. Then on the other end was Police Lieutenant Humphrey Kenny. We're old friends, we owe each other favors. Lieutenant Kenny has a daughter. Her married name is Jennifer English. She is now the widow of the late Charlie English, right? Well, Humphrey Kenny thought if I was in the neighborhood, I should say hello. If he has something he wants to know, why didn't he call me? He sends his respects. I hope the lieutenant's in good health. He expects to live a long time. This is an embarrassment to me. You both know that. We weren't friends when you were on the force, Harry. To tell the truth, I don't like you here looking over my shoulder now. Do you know Kenny has a married daughter? I think I might have heard of it someplace. You happen to know a married name is English? This English here. If the identification holds. I think you can assume. Well, you see what position he's in. He's a father, he's a father-in-law, he's a police officer. He's in this thing with two hats. Shooting took place in here, point blank range. The English were standing like this, the killer's like this. That's the way we figured the trajectory. Right-handed killer, he shoots. Slug goes in under the right occipital ridge, quarters a uh, right lobe of the brain and out this way. 22 caliber, long rifle. Maybe a magnum charge from the impact. Could be a target pistol. I sure wish we had that shell casing. I hate guessing. Okay. Why don't you take him away? I'd be glad to get your elevator back. He had a portfolio, his car keys, his house keys, uh, $38.42 wallet with credit cards, business cards, driver's license, all that stuff. A gold wristwatch, gold wedding band without an inscription, probably right-handed. There were watches on the left wrist. Advertising agency kind of stuff uh, in the portfolio. He worked for an outfit upstairs in the building. We kept trying the uh, car keys to see if the 
unlock something, and this was it. Just the usual car stuff, Milt. Okay. We're gonna fold it here. Fine. Okay. I want the lieutenant to be satisfied, Harry. Any witnesses? English and whoever killed him. You go through the building? There's 30 floors in this building, Harry. What am I looking for? Witnesses, Milt. Witnesses turn up after they watch the TV news about it. That's when you get witnesses. What'd you get from the people he worked with? He was punctual. Nobody liked him, nobody disliked him, nobody had any gossip on it. Harry, you're on your own time. My time belongs to the department. I have eight, mur I have eight murders going, Harry. I don't have a day and a half to spend on a simple piece like this one. Who did it, Milt, the butler? <clears throat> Excuse me. All due respect to the lieutenant's dead son-in-law. This thing's gonna turn out to be done by some guy whose wife he was fooling around with, or some guy who was fooling around with his wife. That's how this thing's gonna end up, and you know that. Well, I get surprised once in a while. I let things develop, Harry. Eventually, the answers come to you. You got a better life than I have, Milt. I have to go out and look for them. Don't you foul me up with Kenny, Harry. I cooperated with you all the way. Not to show you how friendly I am, I'm going to save you the trip to the widow. Turn right, Jennifer. Beautiful. Turn left. Turn left, son. Nice profile. Just your right. Raise your chin, Jennifer. Into the lens. Seduce me. Hold it, Jen. Uh, let's get the wind machine, eh? Could somebody please change the station to something funky? My name is Harry Orwell. I'm a friend of your father's. I am afraid I have some very bad news for you. My father? No, your father's right. Your husband was killed. Charlie? When? Uh, this afternoon, two hours ago. Uh... Oh, no, I just saw Charlie this morning. Yes, I, uh... Look, what are you talking about? Killed? I mean, in, in an accident? In some kind of an auto accident? So, what do you mean, killed? Take it easy. What happened to him? He was shot. Shot? Who would shoot Charlie? Uh, we don't know yet. Look, are you sure that it's Charlie? That's pretty sure. I mean, sometimes you make mistakes. That's one of the things. Somebody's going to have to go down to the morgue. 
to confirm the identification. Me. If you tell me somebody else, I'll go. No, 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 no. I have to do it. Excuse me. Who is he? I don't know. I'm we'll go and find out what he wants. Excuse me, sir. Who are you? Uh, I'm a private detective. Well, what are you doing here? I brought some news. Is that why she was crying? That's right. It was bad news. Like what? It'll be in the paper. What did he say? I have some bad news for her. And why didn't he ask my permission? Hey, why couldn't you have waited till we were finished? No, I'm sorry to spoil your day. I don't want him in my studio. You've finished your business here now, That's haven't you? I'm just waiting. Well, I'll tell you you're outside waiting, all right? Are you close friends? Oh. You and my father. We're just working together. We go back 10 or 15 years, I guess. Did you ever know my mother? No, just your father. She was a woman ahead of her time. She left him because she wasn't satisfied just living in his house and eating his food in the kitchen and paying upstairs in the bedroom. Well, marriages end sometimes. Are you working for my father? I'm here as a friend. Charlie and I weren't living together for about a year. I went to see him this morning to ask him for a divorce. He said no. I wouldn't take no for an answer. I did what I usually do with Charlie. I got him angry. He slapped me. Very hard. It was in a public place and there were witnesses. I better tell you about John. John who? Lockport. Colonel John Lockport, U.S. Army, retired. OK. He was one of the witnesses. Now, what's John to you? My father uses a phrase. It's a little biblical, but descriptive. He calls John my partner in adultery. That's clear. Now, what did the Colonel do when he saw Charlie slap you? I guess he wanted to hit him. Or kill him or something? Whatever. Whatever? Whatever he wanted to do, he didn't do anything. We left there together. How long did you stay together? He walked me to my car, and I went to work. And John went wherever John went. Wherever? He didn't kill him. I was here to identify my mother. She was walking on the street and had a heart attack. I got a call from my father. He said, uh, they have a woman in the morgue who just might be your mother. You better go down and identify her. I said, aren't you going to go? He said, not me. That's all, just not me. I haven't spoken to him since.
maybe he just went for a walk somewhere. This is a funny place for tea and coffee, isn't it? In a bar? Well, you said the first place we came to. They'll pick him up for questioning. And then they'll let him go, but they'll follow him. And then they'll question him again. I'm talking about John. The colonel. And the police. What about the police? I'm a policeman's daughter. I know how it works. He's got to be the prime suspect. You don't know how the case lays out yet. You have to face facts. Whatever the facts are. People get in trouble. Charlie was killed. Everything is upside down. Well, it can straighten out just as fast. You want to suspect somebody, he has to have motive and opportunity, both of them. Where was the colonel when your husband was killed? Huh? Can't be in two places at the same time. If he was someplace else, it means he didn't kill anybody. What if he can't prove where he was? What if he isn't even sure where he was? John spent 30 years in the Army, each day measured out for him. Now he just goes wandering, looking for himself, I guess. The funny thing is, though, he is always there when I need him. I feel a lot better when I hear his voice. Oh, John. my number if you need it. John? Yeah, I'm back. Look, honey, just, just stay where you are. time I thought about the colonel's problem, a little voice in the back of my head kept saying Jennifer. And I got a quick flash vision of her all in yellow. I thought, Jenny moves me. You know, it's been a long time since I had that kind of quick feeling about a girl. I thought, if you're me, Harry, that's a dangerous woman.
Is this where you live? Just wait for you to come back. How much money you got? Eleven million dollars. You steal these? You can steal if you're starving. God won't hate you. Why didn't you tell me you were hungry? I wouldn't have fed you. Huh. You? You're a grump in the morning. Come on. Did you call the cops on me anyway? What do you mean, anyway? I just said you wouldn't call them if I went away. And I said if you went home. I don't have a home. And yeah, what cops? See, there's a cop just sitting right out there next to your boat. Yeah. Where are you taking me? Tonight you're gonna sleep in a bed. Whose bed? Mine. Well, where's Mildred gonna sleep? Mildred's gonna sleep in her own bed. Where's that? In her own house. Yeah, sure. Well, Mildred just happens to be my next door neighbor. Boy, have you got it made. Stay with you in a minute. Want a beer? Oh, thank you. How'd you like my daughter? I'll take her for Christmas. You'll have to get on the end of the line. You really liked her, huh? Yeah, I really liked her. I came out because there's trouble, Harry. Did you get to meet the Colonel yet? Met the man she's living with? No. He's gonna drag her down. She was married to a good man, Harry. Charlie was a good boy. You need somebody to take you to the bathroom? I'm big enough to go to the bathroom by myself, thank you. Are you? You're not big enough to go to bed by yourself and stay there. I was lonesome. You were eavesdropping. What trouble? The finger is pointing at the man she's been living with. Oh, the evidence is mounting against her. She sleeps in his bed. But who would believe it if he killed her husband and she didn't know it? And I'm her father. Who else would believe it? What evidence? We're checking on it now. No, maybe it's nothing. Oh, he's guilty. The thing you know he's guilty oh, of is you know sharing he's innocent. his bed. I still have to prove it. Look. I put by $8,000 for my whole life. There's $1,000 for you, but help her. If you need any part of the $7,000, you can have that too. Put it away. Take it. Now, come on, put it back in your pocket. What are you so angry Well, don't about? shove money at me to buy my help. Harry, it's my only child. Well, then have some trust. I want to tell you something. Jenny's mother walked out on me. When she did, I said to her, if you go out that door, I'll never look at you again. Three months later, she dropped dead in the street. They called me to come down the morgue. When I called Jenny and told her her mother died, that I wouldn't go down there, she never forgave me. She hasn't spoken to me since. Now she needs my help. She won't let me come near her. I love the girl. I have to do something. Help me, Harry. Help Jenny. I wasn't eavesdropping. OK. I just came in to get my sleeping bag. You lead a funny kind of life. You don't even have a car. I have a car. Well, then why don't you use it? It's going to cost me about $300 to get the transmission rebuilt, and I'm thinking about it. You broke now? No, that's not what I'm talking about. It, it's way of life. Hey, uh, how long are you planning to stay here? 
I'm just waiting. For what? For my mom to come back. I gotta be someplace where she can find me. See, the last place she knows where I was is around here. Where's your mom now? In jail. What for? Stealing. She went to get us something to eat. I was gonna do my part, too. She didn't want me stealing. But I said, if she could steal and I couldn't, that she was a hypocrite. She made me wait outside anyhow. And they caught her. But that's what she said. She said, wait outside, and if anything happens, go hide and wait for me. That was that uh, little supermarket a couple blocks down. Aglets. Whatever. And that's the name of it, Aglets. What, do you always steal? We just ran out of money. So we came down here to get a job, but we didn't find one right away. What kind of job are you looking for? Joey is a hairdresser. That's your mother. How long do you think she'll be in jail? Well, maybe we can find out. I'll go to sleep now. Jennifer called at half past six. She apologized, but she was on the way to work. She and the colonel had a long talk. Would I talk to him? I wrote down the address, got Mildred to babysit Liberty, and arrived at five after 9 a.m. I was curious about Jennifer's colonel. I wondered what kind of a man he was. Looking for the Colonel, Harry? Well, what are you looking for, Milt? Triangles, Harry. I told you yesterday. It turns out it was a 22 target pistol. We asked Lockport, uh, do you got a 22 target pistol, Colonel? He said he does. I say, can I see it, Colonel? He says, sure. He says it's uh, right here in his case. But the case is empty, Harry. No pistol. Well, what do you make of that, Milt? He said he has it, but it's missing. We're supposed to think uh, he doesn't know it's missing. That's supposed to put us off the track of trying to find out why he disposed of it. How's Lieutenant Kenny? And it looks good, Milt. Where's the girl? Huh. Oh, uh, well, I guess he's not home, Harry. About Kenny's daughter, she has an apartment of her own, but uh, she keeps clothes in the closet here. You call her place, she's not home, the answering service refers you to this number. How about that? I don't suppose I'd surprise Lieutenant Kenny, though. I wouldn't know one way or another, Milt. Maybe that's why he figured a girl would need your help. Where have we got the Colonel now, Milt, downtown? That's an easy bus ride, isn't it, Harry? You ever ride the buses, Milt? Hardly ever. Well, it's nice. You sit there, look out the window, gives a man a chance to think. You ought to try it sometime, Milt. Thank you. 
is being recorded in Jennifer's apartment. I love you, Jennifer. He's had enough. If you're on his side, I'm your friend. If not, I'll break your back. John, I've got good news for you. They've set the bail. You'll be out of here this afternoon. Thank you, mate. You're Mr. Orwell. I'm at your disposal. What happened to the pistol that wasn't in the case? I don't know. How would it get out of the case if you didn't take it out? I don't know. Do you have any theories? No. No explanation of any kind? Uh, Jennifer did tell me she lost her keys, uh, which would include the key to my apartment. And somebody found them and used them to get into your apartment? I'd give you a better answer if I had one. You know what time English was killed? I told him. And? And I was at the County Museum of Art looking at pictures. I can't think of anything I did or anything that might have happened that would make anybody remember I was there. All afternoon. I was outside for a while looking at the tar pits. Those things are easy enough to check out. Anything else? I didn't kill the man. You don't murder somebody for slapping somebody. It's disproportionate. There's no mistake to killing. You don't commit murder if there are other alternatives because murder has a limited problem-solving value in most situations. So uh, you don't commit yourself to murder lightly. And that's ignoring the insoluble question of morality in the stillness of the night. The times of being totally alone. Not for a slap in the face. Lieutenant Kenny, please. Harry Orwell. I wanted a favor from the good lieutenant, and I caught him in the right mood, but it was going to take an hour to set it up. In the meantime, I couldn't get my mind off Jennifer. Straight in the lens, straight in. Right, now, raise the hands, raise the hands. No, no, no. Just like that. Perfect, perfect. Turn to your right. Now your left. One more time, one more time. Now, right to me, right to me. Very sensual. Come on, kiss me one more. Ah. Press your lips. Very sensual, very sensual. Just about to kiss me. Come on, that's it. Right at me, right at me. Now, close your mouth. Close your mouth. Come on, look down. Chin down, chin down, chin down even further. I know it's difficult. Further. One more time. Now, big smile. Very broad, very broad. That's it. Open your mouth. That's it. Down. One more time. Down. Now to the left. Mrs. English, you're oh, right. There is no Mrs. English. <laughs> Miss Kenny. Who's that? Well, what about Jennifer? Jenny left. Jenny went. And you're right. She went where? Try the car wash across the street. Twice. No, three times. The first 
first time I found them when I came home, on the table. The second time I found them in the car, on the floor. The third time was yesterday. They're still missing. Is this what you carry them in? I like big pocketbooks. How does anything fall out of that? I told you, misplaced. I lose lipsticks, too. Yeah, I lose lipsticks. Well, why don't you take me home with you? After you take the Colonel home. After I take the Colonel home, I'm going to stay there with him. I thought I'd go through the drawers, dump them out on the floor, empty the closets, look in the medicine cabinet, see what's in the refrigerator. And find what? Nothing, hopefully. Looking for what? Well, after I'm done, you'll know your keys aren't there. You just lost me. Let's go back to the beginning. Why are your keys missing? Because I'm a chaotic person. The colonel's in much better shape if somebody stole him. It helps explain how a pistol got out of his apartment. Don't you believe him? Yeah, I believe him. The problem is to prove everyone ought to believe him. Do you have a spare key? Yes. Let me have it. No, I'll search my apartment myself tomorrow. Not the way I will today. I don't want you in my apartment, touching and prying and looking. I don't want it. Then you come home and find the missing keys on the table again, or under your bed this time. You'll try to think that you put them there, but you won't be able to make up your mind, because maybe that's not where they were all the time. Maybe they were in somebody's pocket. Somebody's been in my house, said the three bears. We ought to find out. Will you call me the minute you're finished? Yes. I usually leave these with the manager. I picked them up from him last night. I'll get them back to him. Can you drop me off? Where? The women's house of detention. Liberty's mother?
What happened? You missed. The house belongs to who lives in it. If you want guests, you invite them. If you lock the door, you want the cockroaches to stay outside. I had three things to do. I had to get myself a tetanus shot and a bandage. I had to see Lieutenant Humphrey Kenny. I had to come back to tell the police what happened. I sprang for a taxi. Both ways. Plus tip. It's tax deductible. When I got back, Jennifer's car was there. I wanted to see her again, but not here. Not now. I just had my tea. It was somewhere between four and five. Carry on while I called you. I'll be with you in a minute. And uh, did you come out immediately? Find no, uh, not right away. It was a few minutes ago. Hi. You're the last person I expected to see here tonight. Colonel Lockport is an honorable man. Hmm. He sent me home to protect my reputation. He didn't want me consorting with a suspect in a murder case. That's not bad, a little old-fashioned, but not bad. My bed. He's even been on my bed. After I talk to the police, I'll take you to a hotel. Hey, don't worry. I'm almost as honorable as the colonel. I'll go up to my room in a minute and I'll let you go. You don't mind sitting in the lobby, do you? Don't worry about me. I'm just too complicated tonight. I have to find another apartment. I hate moving. I guess it's like obscene phone calls. You change your number. Maybe we'll find him. It doesn't make any difference. It's such a violation. Somebody in your home. I better call John and let him know where I am. If he's not able to reach me, he'll probably worry. You can call him from the room. You're very patient, aren't you? Wrong timing. What's that? The courtship dance. Round and around. Did I give you the impression I was coming on with you? No, I know. I like you. I like you, too. I have a commitment, that's all. I'm not available. I didn't ask you. Don't be angry. Now deal with me. Deal with what I do. You're not very patient, are you? <laughs> I guess not. Not always. Not. Be careful of me. It's just something I do. I don't even mean to do it. I just want to be liked. I ask for approval to make you come closer. I will call John from the room. You said you want to get off. Thanks. Hagrid's was where Liberty's mother got herself arrested for shoplifting. All I had to do now was talk Mr. Hagrid's into dropping the charges. After that, sleep. 
But you never know. It was just beginning to be light out when my phone rang. It was Lieutenant Kenny. During the night, Jennifer's colonel had shot and killed himself. where he was sitting. He wrote the notes. He got his weapon. Bang. Right? Ask him. He found the body. He's the one who called us. I had an appointment with him at 7 o'clock this morning. We're both early risers. I rang the bell. No answer. I rang a couple of times. Then I went over to that door over there. The sliding glass door was open for air. But the screen door was locked. I looked in, and I saw him. It was just the way he showed you. I ripped a hole through the screen for my hand with my penknife so that I could reach in and unlock it. I walked over to the desk. I didn't touch anything. You could tell. Call the police. And that's it. Open and shut. No loose ends. A guy kills a husband, then kills himself. Kenny's daughter's in a clear. When do you expect to hear from ballistics? Don't you worry about that, Harry. Uh, it's the same gun to kill English. Now use the phone, okay, man? Who are you going to call? Ballistics. Give him a chance to do their work, Harry. Mm, yesterday afternoon, somebody took a shot at me with a 22 target pistol. Oh, the 22 target pistols, Harry. I dug the slug out of the wall, gave it to Lieutenant Kenny to take the ballistics for me. What happens if that slug came out of the same gun that shot English? Yeah, this is Mel Bosworth. Have you got that report on the 22 caliber uh, slug that Lieutenant Kenny gave you last night? What are you using my name for? Makes it official, Milt. Yeah, I saw the guy that took a shot at me. It wasn't the colonel. If he used the same gun that killed Charlie English and the colonel, you don't have a suicide anymore. You have a murder. Can't you read, Harry? I am guilty. Guilty of what? Guilty of killing Charlie English. Well, it's not a sentence. It's unfinished. There's no period after guilty. Harry, you, you keep needling me. You're going to start a war. He was court-martialed when he was in Vietnam. I defended him. He went into a village looking for Viet Cong. He found them. He killed them. He also killed 68 men, women, and children. You were wondering what he could be guilty of. Was he convicted? He was acquitted. Maybe he didn't acquit himself. That's a suicide note. Or maybe it's just a man's conversation with his conscience. Hello? Go ahead. Say it again. No. No. Yeah, that's... Uh, yeah. If Jennifer didn't know the colonel was dead, I thought she ought to hear it from me. I kept going back to the phone to try to reach her. On one of the calls, there was a message. Would I have dinner that night with her and the colonel? So she didn't know. So I kept calling back. Jennifer English? I kept hoping I'd reach her. I kept hoping I wouldn't reach her. I've had better days. Next case, David. The People versus Julia Cole. Your Honor, the man who was a victim in this case refuses to prosecute. What do you want me to do? Dismiss? There isn't any case, Your Honor. Dismissed. <coughs> Who's next? The People versus Henderson. Well, listen, the don't stand here. You're free. Go home. Two, nine, six, five, eight, seven, uh, two counts, both of which are felonies. Count one alleges violation of section 556, subdivision 80. Check. Hey. hey. 
I, uh, I made a sand castle. You want to go see it? Sure. Hey. Yeah. You're okay. So are you. Come on, Ron. Come on. It's really me. Hurry up. You take your problems one at a time. I went back to thinking, does Jennifer know yet? I kept trying to find out. At five, her service had another message. I was expected for dinner at 7.30. Yes? Can I talk to you? You are talking to me. I'm a professional photographer. I took some pictures of you. You what? I took some pictures of you. I had this idea for a series about a day. Just a day. I took pictures of you shopping, coming out of the supermarket. That kind of pictures. Well, what do you want? I want you to look at them. I put them in front of your door in a brown envelope. You what? Well, I know where you live. I followed you home one day. I had them in my hand. I was going to show them to you. But I lost my nerve. I'll look at them. That's six Thank you. Out of town? I waited, and I thought by now she's heard it on the radio, by now she's seen it in the newspapers, but she hadn't. She came home to make supper for two men, and only one was there. Who was going to explain that? Who wanted that job? Hello. How are you? Oh, handle that with care. That's our dinner. I hope you like salad. Yeah. John makes this terrific spinach and mushroom salad. And it's good for you, too. You know, I wasn't going to come back here, but I thought about it a lot, and I'm not going to let that kind of fear change my life. I'm glad that you could come. John and I wanted to get a chance to thank you. These are really good. Where do you keep the booze? Over there. I can't believe I didn't even know he was there. He really catches me. It's almost as if we were doing a layout. Oh, can I do that for you? I got it. I'll call John. He should have been here by now. He's dead. Is he? Is he really dead? I'm cold. Don't you worry about me. I'm not going to jump. I just need to breathe. He had no right to leave his mark 
on my bed. He had no right here. He had no right in my bed. He had no right in my room. He had no right in my house. I cried for a long time, and then she was able to stop. I told her what happened to the Colonel. After that, sometimes she fell asleep, and I held her that way all night. I wanted to protect her. I, I wanted to help her. Maybe that's when I fell in love with her. No, I guess I was in love all along. I want you to listen to me, Roy. I'm your friend. I'm listening. Put the machine on record. Thought she was pure, right? But she's weak. She runs to who's ever near her. I can be patient. You must take her to a high place, Roy. You have to purify her now. Make her wear white to be ready. A soft and simple dress, flowing in the winds, like flying. She'll die. She doesn't know how. Then you must go with her, Roy. I don't mind. It would be like being married forever. That's true. White is like a bride. And I was up and I didn't know what to do with myself after I made coffee, so I looked at her pictures. The more I looked at the pictures, the more questions I had about the photographer. Who was the guy? Why did he follow her everywhere? How did he come to crawl inside her life like that? And then it hit me. It had to be the same guy who killed the colonel. 
The same guy who killed her husband. The same guy who sat at her table and took a shot at me, the cockroach. Jennifer on the colonel's balcony. Where was the camera? Up higher, looking down. Not high enough to be on a roof. He wasn't sitting in a tree, either. He was in a room looking out a window, right? Now, what to do about Jennifer? I couldn't put the chain on the lock again from outside. But on the other hand, what was the sense of having a police lieutenant for her father if he couldn't get a cop to stand guard for an hour or two?
runs to who's ever near her. I can be patient. You must take her to a high place, Roy. You have to purify her now. Make her wear white to be ready. Put this on. A soft and simple dress. Flowing in the winds. Like flying. She'll die. She doesn't know how. Then you must go with her, Roy. I don't mind. be like being married forever. That's true. White is like a bride. Harry? Huh, hi. This was on the bed table. Something crazy on it. They had played a little, but the battery ran out. Call Lieutenant Kenny. Tell him to stay near a phone. I need some batteries. Yes, sir. Oh, this takes the rechargeable kind. Give me the rechargeable kind. Wait, you don't replace those. You just recharge them. Right, you want a rechargeable unit? Give me one of those. Oh, which one? Any one. Well, this one's $16, and the one next to it is almost... Look, I don't care. Just give me one of them and put some batteries in it. Yes, sir. Do it again, Harry. I could play it a hundred times. I could play it all day. What goes it do to go moving if you don't know where? Make her wear white to be ready. A soft and simple dress. Flowing in the winds. Like flying. Flowing in the wind like She'll flying. Fly. What about an airport? Come on, listen to it. He wants to fly himself, not me plane. A high place. Then you must go with her, Roy. On a rooftop somewhere? A high rise. I don't mind. There's pictures of an unfinished building. Like being married. Where, where are the pictures? His place. Where's the guy live? That's Tribal 9140 Fair Drive. All right. Like I'll get somebody from Building and Safety and meet you there. Terrified of high places. I like your expression. Fear before death. Oh, please. Don't be frightened. I'll hold your hand. You betrayed me, you know. I told you I was your friend. You didn't care. It doesn't matter. I killed your husband for you. Smile. Then I killed the other one. You were free. That's what I did it all for, to free you. Smile. But you couldn't stand it. There had to be another one after them. Always another one. Smile! Get up, stand on your feet.
look, look. I'm, I'm really grateful to you for everything that you've done. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. I said get on your knees, people! Oh, oh, I don't have any more film. You said it didn't matter anyway. Look. <gasps> don't be afraid. I can fly. Look. I can fly! I'm not very good at thank you notes. I'm glad you came. I can't stay. I just didn't want to send myself on a piece of paper through the mail. You look good. I'm beginning to feel better. I get you a drink or something? Mm. The night that you told me about John, and you just held me, I was closer to you than I had been with anybody else in my life. Me too, I think. I keep wanting to do something about that, to go on from there, you know? I know. I'm not whole, Harry. Everything slides away. I can't hold on to anything. I want you. I'd hold you too tight. Or I'd be so scared to lose you that I'd let go too quick. I'd rather not want, I'd rather not have, and then there's nothing to lose, you see? Some of it, I guess. drive anymore. It scares me. I don't know why. Nothing that happened had anything to do with driving. I changed the locks five times in five days. I just didn't feel safe. So I went home. I never thought I'd do that. I'll see you. Is that a promise? As close to a promise as I come these days. 
Days happen to you. And sometimes I wish I could go back to being 17 again. When I was 17, I once said, a woman is like a bus, let her go. There'll be another one along in five minutes. Now, that was a long time ago. Goodbye, Jennifer. Thank you.